to come out to in the entire world. Live at Red Rocks, this place is obviously epic on a, on a myriad of levels. We in Colorado, baby, we in Denver. We come to Denver and make genuine connections, new partners, new agents, new managers, excellent representation, and people you can work with for the rest of your career. I think it's so important for creators to get together because that's the future of our business. And this community really proves that we're stronger together. Welcome to the Chimpan, uh, Chingwag podcast. <laughs> well, it's always because an audience is nice. They feed you, the energy is nice. They have a back and forth with people. Then people got up and were telling us really interesting things about themselves, and it's great. Everything good that has ever happened in my entire career has somehow, in one way, shape, or another, come from Series Fest. Do it again, okay? It's take two. Take Listen, two. let's let's so do it. Yeah, so let's, what, let's so do it ask me what's showing tonight. What's going on behind me? Series Fest, baby. It's really a celebration of creators. That's really what we're here to do, is celebrate creators on the verge of breaking into the industry. And everybody I've met is not only interested in you personally and what you do creatively, but they want to share their story. It's really about the community. It's really about the arts. It's about the people who make the films and the television shows. The artists come first here. And we're doing a panel today about Hollywood disabilities and how to open up more opportunities around that. It's actually been a great, great time. I I'm excited for, for the party tonight, too. I'm excited for all the parties. All you filmmakers out there, uh, if you have a series that you want to get exposure, Series Fest is the place to do it. It'll be bigger than the NFL in three years. It's like going to the, the best summer camp you always wished existed when you were a kid. <laughs> Beautiful day today, sunny and green, so we'll see you season 10. I am two thumbs up for season 10. Big round of applause, please, for episode one of season two of Everyone is Doing Great. And a big, big round of applause for your moderator this evening, senior contributor at Forbes, Mr. Jeff Conway. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I feel like no Sunday scaries after watching that. You know what I mean? Like, that's so much fun. So awesome. So again, like Claire said, my name is Jeff Conway. I'm the Hollywood Entertainment Writer and Reporter for Forbes, and I am so excited about this panel. First of all, season two, if you did not watch season one, I know that compilation was great, but you need to go back and watch when you can because it's so fun and it's so good. Um, but I'm going to introduce the people we have on the cast and crew of Everyone is Doing Great. So first of all, if I may... Uh, we have James Lafferty, the co-creator, executive producer, and star. Thank you. Thank you. We have, yeah, of course, we have Stephen Coletti, co-creator, executive producer, and star. We have Alexandra Park, executive producer, writer, and star. We have Kariba Hine, star. We have Na Win, executive producer. And Michelle Lang, executive producer. Welcome, welcome, everybody. It's so exciting to have you here. I love that this is actually a very big panel. We have a lot of good personality here, I can tell. <laughs> Yes, but cool. first of all, how was it? I know some of you guys were watching it. How was it watching season two on a big screen? Oh, man. Uh, Nerve-wracking. Yeah, for first, sure. first time for us right there. We, we've been itching to get to this date because uh, we really wanted to see how it would be received from uh, a live audience. And, um, yeah, you know, we were hanging in the wings over there. Definitely nervous. <laughs> I'm already crying. Brought us back to the first time we were here with the pilot of the first season. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny how much you learn, but then when a moment like this comes along, you feel like you've learned absolutely nothing, and you're just like totally exposed again, and you're like, oh, God, I hope they like it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, crazy. 
<laughs> well, being the creators, I mean, their life imitates art in a lot of ways here. Obviously, the Eternal is like a Vampire Diaries-esque feel, you know, like that. But you come from One Tree Hill, one of my favorite shows growing up. Loved it so much. Thanks. You come from Laguna Beach. We're like the same school year. I loved it. You felt like we were in our passing period talks. You didn't even go to my school and we were talking about you. Pretty wild. But like creating this, you know what I mean, about these actors that had this high point and now have to figure out how to continue life and find ways of being happy and successful and satisfied years later, you know, how did this idea come about between you two? Well, man, it's, it's really just like, we felt like it was a great jumping off point, you know, it's, it's kind of a unique perspective that we have in this odd world. Um, and, you know, James and I have commiserated over the years in all sorts of horror stories, auditioning, I do not recommend it to anybody. Um, <laughs> it's just all sorts of weird, incidences and, and set life and, and personalities that you run into, just honestly like any other kind of workplace, but uh, it's, it's magnified in a way with Holly Weird. And so we wanted to uh, use that as a jumping off point, um, really, because we felt like we had that perspective. But you know, ultimately, it was about going in and, and figuring out who these characters are and these relationships and making it about friendship and about love and, and all of that. So. You know, beyond just obviously the creators, but stars, producers we have here too. Can you talk about the process? Obviously, you guys used the main Laguna Beach, One Tree Hill. You used your fan base to help raise funds to put this show to life, you know. But how did you make sure that you kept it authentic and transparent to the donors throughout the whole time? Because there are these kind of Indiegogos and whatnots that can be a little bit misleading. And you guys were very, very candid about what this is and what you wanted to do with this passion. Yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely a scary thing to do. Neither of us had done it before, really. And um, I think the biggest thing for us was um, that transparency, like you're saying. And that also happens to be the hardest thing when you have um, a crowdfunding campaign for like an arts project, because you can't really give away the end product. Um, you can't give too much of it away because, you know, obviously there's spoilers involved and that's really at the end of the day what you're trying to sell. So you're trying to sell somebody on a dream of something that you can't even really prove in any material way. Um, and so what we were hoping was that we could create an experience for people throughout the process um, through the different perks and stuff that we did and also through festivals like this. I mean, festivals like Series Fest were huge for us because it allowed us to come and meet people um, and spend time with people uh, that you know from all over the country that we might not have otherwise been able to spend time with. Um, and, and, and show them, you know, in a private setting, in a setting that was controlled, and we knew that nothing was gonna get leaked, hey, this is what you're getting behind. Like, this is the heart of the show, this is what we're going after. Um, and then obviously it's up to them from there. So, couldn't have done it without the festivals, absolutely not. Um, and, um, and, and for sure could not have done it without the followings that we had from, you know, our previous work. But yeah, I mean, huge, I'm sure there's a lot of people here who donated and contributed to the first season, so thank you to all of you. Shout out those EDG heroes. Yeah. Great, yeah. thanks, Brie. If I can bring up two now, I mean, Alex and Kariba, I loved in season one, I, obviously she was making fun of my Chicago accent earlier. I was but, not making fun of anything. I mean, she, she loved it. I think she actually thought it, found it probably endearing. I appreciate that. But uh, I love, I, I loved it in season one, but now we even got in this first episode, when you guys have like the banter with your accents that I see as accents, it's so good to listen to you guys. It's so much fun, you know. But, you know, with this being a show that was really created, you know, financially, independently, and everything like that, as actors, as a producer, how is this different from projects you guys have done before? You both have other uh, projects before this. How has this been different? Having, like, that emotional and creative freedom that you maybe don't feel so much on other sets. Uh, yeah, um, certainly the most unique show that I've ever worked on as an actor. And I think um, probably the first part of that is working with your friends, which is actually as good as it sounds. The second part is the way that it's sort of written where we have points that we have to hit in the scenes, but otherwise we're given a lot of freedom to sort of improv and get to those points however we want. You have to know the story in a way that I've never had to do prep for a show in my life because you don't know what's coming towards, it, towards you. And I feel like that gave me the most amazing amount of freedom and just having that knowledge and the hold on the story like I've never had before to do that. And then on top of that, I think sort of working with these guys that you do sort of, you feel like you're being written for 
as I, were being written for, directed by, produced on, by people who have an emotional attachment to the show. And so the decisions are being made for the betterment of the show purely, which is, for an actor, the, the trust and the relief is like no other. How about for you, Alex? Um, can you, what was the question again? Oh, no, it was, no, how is it different from other shows? Yeah, well, for me, um, <laughs> it's just going to be honest, um, not good at interviews. No, this is an interview. Um, it's very different for me um, for many reasons. Um, obviously, uh, being on the producing team is very new for me. So being involved on sort of every level um, is hugely satisfying and immensely hard work. Um, but but just you, you're kind of involved on a much, much deeper level than I've ever been before where I've just been an actor on a show. And then... Um, coming in as a writer in this season as well, obviously that was deepened even further, where you just, you really, you care so much. Like I think my experience before EDG was just, you know, obviously I cared and I took my job very seriously as I do, um, but it's kind of, you know, you play the part, you're the actor, you go in and you, that's your thing. You do, you learn your lines, but it's, it's so much bigger than that when you're, you know, you're writing it, you're producing it, it's, you're, put, you're raising money for it, it's all your family and your friends involved and you're, you're telling stories that really matter to you um, and that you, you know, we're telling stories that we hope really connect with people and make audience feel less alone and, like, you know, their hard times in life are, you know, they're not the only ones going through stuff that is just kind of like something's just hit you in the face and it's like, where am I? You know, um, and so we, I just care a lot more. And it's like, yeah, it's very, very different for sure. I want to ask too, Nowin and Michelle too, as the executive producers as well, you know, how has this creative process been different from you from a production standpoint? Um, I, I mean, from a producer standpoint, uh, especially on everyone's doing great, I, I handle a lot of the nuts and bolts, like a lot of the budget schedule. How do we actually make this from an idea to a reality? How do all those things happen? Um, so in terms of that, filmmaking is filmmaking. Whether you have $10 million or whatever money you have, you just are figuring it out, or $60,000 or $5, whatever. Um, I think the difference with this one is that because it is friends, like you don't have the worry that anyone is fighting for anything but the best. And there's a, an, an inherent support that you don't have to worry about the politics of it. Like, if I say something to James and Steven about budget, like, they know I am fighting for everything they want, and then we'd make choices together. So from that, it's the same. Like, I, um, I produce a variety of stuff, and, you know, that's similar. I will say one of the differences in this one is we all wear so many hats. Um, and this season I got to jump in and direct a few episodes, so it was fun to not just be in the nuts and bolts. To get to like play on the creative side was really fun. And that's an opportunity that doesn't come along in the other films, because obviously there's directors on those films. It's a film, it's one film, you know? So that was a really fun, um, unique experience to get to play in the creative a lot more on this one. Absolutely, how about you now? Yeah, I just want to echo what Michelle said and, and talk about it a little bit more, because I know that these guys won't say it about themselves, because it really always starts at the top and what your leadership is and as co-creators of this, it, they really do steer the ship. And for this show, what's really unique about it, like obviously the dream is to be with a big company where you get the money and the time that you think you need for it, but there's a lot to be said about doing it independently as well because one, you have more creative control. I think two, we are a team of nine executive producers, which sounds like a lot, but we are family and friends and trusted people who bring different experience into it. and particularly with these two guys as leaders, when you work in a group where you have people who trust the team that they've gathered, it's really invaluable. And I will say what's different for season two, you know, as I mentioned, we have nine producers, but three of us were producers before, now we're all executive producers on the level field. And also in this season, when you're doing it independently with leaders like this, you have opportunities that you would never get in a, a much larger project. And we were elevated without even having to ask for it, they just did it. Alex wrote two episodes, Michelle directed two episodes. I also, in addition to my producing you know, responsibilities, run the publicity for it. So there's an incredible amount of experience that we bring into it that they trust. 
But beyond that, for the things that we want to do that are outside of ex our expertise, they are they empower us and they also champion us and they really support us. And that's incredibly unique. And so that's why we care so deeply about this project. Absolutely, that's great to hear. Thanks, Tom. So if I may, let's go back to late 2020. That's when domestic distribution was chosen by Hulu to air season one and stream season one. So congratulations, so cool. Thanks. So now, how is, how is this process? I know now we have season two and you guys will be shopping that. So how is this process? First of all, how was that moment when you heard Hulu's gonna take it? And now what's the thought process now going into the shopping of season two? Oh man. The Hulu moment? Oh God. <laughs> Uh, it, it's, we've been doing this since 2017. We shot the pilot in 2017. We shot the first season in 2018 after a crowdfunding campaign. It took another year after that to finish the show. And then in 2020, we actually got it onto Hulu. But by that time, um, a lot of time had passed. We'd been out to plenty of people. Um, this was our first time going through a process like this, actually trying to sell a finished product. Um, and it was television, it wasn't a film. So it was just like the, the landscape was completely and totally uncertain. And um, I, I just remember getting that call. We were Alex and I were at the park, and um, we were with our dog. And I just remember like laying down on the grass because it had been so long since we had heard anything. And I was like, "This is, this is it. Like, it all leads to this. It's it's really we'll we self distribute maybe. You know, like we'll like put it out on Amazon or like iTunes or something. Like we'll just that'll be that." And I was just like on the ground staring at the sky. And she came over and she was like. Um, are you are you okay? He was like he was despondent. That's why we were at the park was, was because like it was like the last person had said no, and like I'm sort of the one that's like no, we 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 got this. And I was like let's go to the park, and he was just lying there, like with I think a small tear, and he was just like, <laughs> and like. And then right after she asked me that question, my phone just goes. And I picked it up, and it was an email from. Did I turn this off? Hello. It was, uh, it was an email from our sales agent, and he said that Hulu had made an offer. And um, I just, like, shouted. We both shouted. Like, everyone in the park thought we were absolutely insane. <laughs> Called Steven. He's, like, trying to have lunch with his, with his nieces, and we're just like, oh, my God, like, oh, shit, man, can you believe it? But what an amazing moment to be at, like, at your lowest low yeah. and get that, you know, moment later. Honestly, a real, I've never had a moment like that in my life where I was like, wow, I couldn't have written that. That was, that was weird. Um, but yeah, so um, I don't know. That probably wasn't an answer to your question. But um, I'll say we, we should st shout out uh, another one of our producers, Stuart Lafferty, actually, James' little brother. He, yeah, and I mean, you know, we, uh, this, this family that creates this all together, um, you know, we had, our producing team came to actually James and I. We're like, hey, we should elevate Stu. Like, he's killing it. This was when we were doing the first season. Like, he's just working really hard. And we're like, yeah, I mean, yeah, Stu works really hard. And we're like, we hadn't we had even really, th we haven't thought about it. And we're like, sure, let's do it. And cut to a couple years later, Stu introduced us to somebody who introduced us to, at the time, Endeavor Content, which is now fifth season, who was our sales agent, who changed the game for us. And so it's just, you know, it doesn't forget that it doesn't matter. It's James's little brother, but like just the fact that like the team was like we should elevate this person, and then he became a part of it and felt like he was even a little more invested. And from that, that one relationship led to this huge relationship, which ultimately got the show sold. So it's just crazy how that all kind of happened. So uh, Stu wishes he can be here, but we we shout him out. Yeah, amazing. There was a lot of um, good like good timing and sort of luck that happened, but it was also a lot of, you know, um, I think it was putting ourselves in that position so that people like Stuart could um, just make a move like that and, and it could and it could pay off, you know? Like yeah. he, yeah, that was, it was really, there was a lot of really hard times, but at the end of the day, there was a lot of really amazing, like little magical moments like that. No real shortcuts, just a lot of coming up Definitely. short. <laughs> yes, yeah, there you go. So we've been able to see, you know, episode one of season two. So shopping-wise, what's the thought process? What's going to be happening in the weeks and months ahead that we can expect from you guys? Uh, well, newsflash, it's not on Hulu anymore. Um, so, uh, yeah, now we have two seasons to sort of um, shop around, and that's, you know, uh, kind of exactly what we'll be doing, I guess. We, and Hulu is actually still on the table. This We didn't have some, like, some sort of a falling out with them. No, this is, no, no, no. It's not traditional, not. No. you know, experience as far as, like, acquiring the show and then totally taking it on as one of their own. They, you know, they wanted to push us, but they just, basically, it's a license deal where they had with us for uh, two years, and that time has come up. They, you know, they knew that like we had the possibility of maybe doing it independently again. So they're like, well, you know, 
we'll see where we're at in our slate and what they got and what they're trying to fill um, when, when, whenever we're done. So, you know, we'll take it to them. We'll take it to everyone. It's, it's similar to how we were with the first season, but we are in such a better position because we've done a season already and people have seen it. And, you know, the response was, was good for Hulu. They, they did pay a lot of compliments with it. They just weren't really ready to put it as, like, the new Hulu original, you know? So it's, yeah, it's still, you know, it's still a possibility. All, all options are on the table. I would love to hear your thoughts. Obviously, it's very timely right now. WGA and the writer's strike. So creatively right now, what, how do you feel for your fellow professional, for your fellow creative right now? Um, do you feel like there is something to resolve here soon? Will this be months? You know, what are you, from what are you hearing, what are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, I think it's obviously, a, it's a really tricky time. And everyone hopes that it gets resolved quickly. But I think also everybody realizes that this is a time of, like incredibly rapid change where nobody knows what's going on, but we know that this is not sustainable in terms of, you know, the, um, you know, I, there's, there's just, uh, I think a lot on both sides and that's why what I do here. <laughs> Sorry. I think that's why like both sides are at the table right now. And there's like people are, are, are far apart and, you know, we obviously are, are massively in support of, um, you know, the WGA and our guild and every guild that has to, you know, go to the mat with the studios. Um, but the good thing is the studios are going to the mat. Like everybody's in the ring, everybody's having the discussion and it's a discussion that needs to be had. And hopefully, you know, sooner than later, we can come out of this thing knowing where we're gonna be and how we're gonna do this for the next, you know, five, 10 years, you know, at least, hopefully. So being independently created, you know, finance like that, it's very prideful. But what have been some of the most challenging moments due to that process? You know, as great as that is, it's got to come with a lot of difficulty and sometimes makes it a little bit harder when you don't have the man, quote unquote, you know, overly helping you out. I would actually say that independently it could be, you know, there's a case to be made for it being easier actually because when you have a team of nine producers that work together, when the obstacles happen because they come every single day, that's just what it is on a set, we get on the phone very quickly and the trust that we talked about and the expertise that we bring to it, decisions are made really quickly amongst yeah. the team. And there's ama amazing communication when your producing team all care as much as the next one. Like everybody wants, everybody, wants to be on this show and is, is so happy to be a part of it. And so I just feel, yeah, I mean, in some ways we get things sorted out because there's no, nobody's, you know, there's no agenda, there's no secrets or any, it's just kind of, okay, what's the issue and let's get it done. I mean, Michelle's kind of the problem solver in terms of, kind of. a lot of, a, a lot of, <laughs> Michelle, yes. I mean, we've, we've just got incre incredible people on this crew and very, very lucky for Michelle and, uh, and everyone, but Michelle, no. talk. Um, <laughs> I mean, so um, how many people like want to make their own shows? Like, do we have directors, producers, no. writers? So you would like to like, I just, I think, like, I think there's this idea that as you get bigger, it will get easier. And I've done stuff all the way from like, you know, a $60,000 feature all the way to like $10 million and it doesn't get easier the more money, it just gets different and the problems get harder in a lot of ways. Like they get scarier because there's like so much at stake. However, that being said, shooting this through a time when it was very crushed, like it's just a lot of turmoil with like some of the restrictions still on, um, it's just solving problems. And that's, if you like solving problems, you're gonna love the film industry. Like problems every day, <laughs> everyday problems. That's just what it is. But you just, if you, like sol if you like solving them, and if you don't, you should probably find something else to do because it's problems. But it's lovely because sometimes, like especially with this team, the problems create like sometimes I would come to them and say, hey, this is a challenge to find this location. And the, the cool thing about this is that as writers on here, they're always so willing to explore other options. And sometimes we would come up with something rad. And that's kind of the gift in it. Those challenges can be really beautiful if you let them be. But there's always challenges. Uh, I was gonna say, I'd, I'd never, I'll never forget the time when we first sat down with Michelle uh, for season one, first episode, and she started going through logistics with us and uh, helped write the ship because we, you know, James and I are like, all right, we, we've we got an idea, we know what we want to do, and, and, and James is like, yeah, I think I can direct this. We're like, all right, we can act in it. And from there, 
all right, how do we do this? <laughs> and Michelle shows up with this giant binder and just starts like, all right, all right, we're going budget, we're going locations, cast, crew, and we're just like, oh shit, all right, we've got a lot to learn. But I didn't um, know Coletti at all. I think I scared you. I felt like I scared you. I was I'm like, here's a I was very, here's very like a impressed. lot of questions all at once. I, I felt safe. I was like, oh my gosh, we've got this huge mountain to climb. Like, how the fuck are we gonna get up there? We're standing here naked. <laughs> Michelle brings clothes. all the gear, and we're like, okay, I think we can do this. So. Before we wrap up, I want to say for Serious Fest fans that have seen the first episode, what can we expect from the rest of season two when we're able to watch it? Do you want to share a couple of secrets? I think we've announced a couple of names. What can you expect? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 just let me say. That a lot you, more of these two, which is a good, good, yeah, good like, thing, as you saw from that first yeah. episode. <laughs> See a lot more of us, yes, but uh, it, it's it's kind of there's a lot. We you know we we had that first season to kind of, you know, figure it out, and now we've we we've, we've gone into the second season, and it's just kind of the themes mirror those of the first season, which is, you know, leaning on your friends in tough times, and 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 finding the bright side when you're faced with inevitable curveballs of life, and finding the comedy in in dark moments um, that we all experience. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's more of that. And I guess season two, you know, was I suppose mostly it was Seth and Jeremy who were really struggling to figure out where they were and what they were doing with their season lives. Season one. Yeah, yeah. Season one. <laughs> they know. And, um, and then season two, we kind of flipped that. I guess so the girls were sort of representing what the guys wanted but didn't know how to get in terms of happiness and life and it's all rosy. Season two, things kind of flip, as they do in life. Um, and uh, what was rosy for the girls is uh, not so rosy anymore. But uh, we get to sort of pull the curtain back on the girls and, and just explore how fragile their foundations have become. And that's all intertwined. And, yeah, there's a lot of, a, a lot of wild stuff in there. So it's... Um, you see it all through a couple of very wonderful performances, too. So you look forward to that. Amazing. So before we leave the stage, I, stage, excuse me, I do know also, Alex, you and I share the exact same birthday, three years apart, May what? 14th, which is a week from today. We do. We sure do. So I thought we should sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> I even went to Whole Foods and got you a cupcake, a cinnamon oh. churro cupcake. Oh, wow. Candles and all. Oh. So will you guys help us sing happy birthday early to Alex? Oh, yeah. And to and you, Jeff. Jeff. No, no. No, yes! No. Oh, we have the same birthday. So I hope you like cinnamon churro. <laughs> it was the cutest one in the rack, so. You are so sweet. You're the cutest one in the rack. Wow. <laughs> uh, can you pass that down to Alex, please? Oh and I have there you candles. Go. I went to a gas station got a lighter, because I don't smoke. Oh, <laughs> Dude, how am I, what am I supposed to do? Oh, like, what am I supposed is, to do? This was mine and James's idea together. <laughs> we did this together. No. <laughs> Jeff, you stop. Do you guys mind lighting this for her, too? Oh, nice. <laughs> this is our birthday cake. Oh, I'm just singing to Alex. I hope you guys will join me. Oh. All right, ready? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to Jeff. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Alex and Jeff. Thank you. Jeff. Happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> to you. All right, blow it out. Thank you, guys. Thank you all and so much, you, guys. Jeff. That's so thank sweet. Thank you guys so much for coming thank out. You so so much. Thank you so thank much for thank coming. Thank you guys so much. You Everyone is doing great. Make sure you guys keep an eye out because it's going to be shopped. Can't wait to see where it goes. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. We were really nervous, so thank you. <laughs>